It has been, been some years since we last met. I am Sarah Kemble, actress of renown, manager of Roger Kemble's strolling players and mother of seven. The years have been fleet and busy since I last strolled to the shoulder of Mutton Inn on the 4th of July, 1755. I strolled arm in arm with my beloved father and my husband, Roger. We came there for a pie at the inn. We discussed the plans for the Landrin Dodwell's races week and, and the company accommodation and transportation. That afternoon, I ran my acting roles through my head for that evening's performances. I rested in my rooms on the first floor of the shoulder of Mutton Inn. I had barely shut my eyes when I was contorted in pain. It was the beginning of the labour of my firstborn. All evening and night I struggled until just as dawn broke, my darling girl came into the world. My Sarah, my namesake. Oh, I fell in love at first sight. My husband Roger did too. He had consoled himself throughout my labour in the inn's parlour beneath my rooms. He and my father were overjoyed at my survival and the delivery of a healthy girl. As I lay exhausted in the birth in bed, my tiny girl clasped to my breast, I could hear Roger Parr and the others all shouting and laughing and singing the praises of my Sarah's beauty and thanking God for my safe delivery. It is a lasting memory and a precious one too. I can still hear their happy voices diminishing as they, as they passed along the high street, Roger sharing the joy of his fatherhood with the tradespeople of that Brecon Street. And here she is now. My darling babe, Sarah, and my handsome son, Stephen, a most definite wit. Sarah, I was just telling how you were born here in the shoulder of Mutton Inn. You see the very window, it lights the very room, the, the very, very bed. bed where I was born. I've heard the story of my welcome to the world a score of times, dear Marsh. Every time we tour in Brecon or anywhere near it, you dote too much on me. I am not so childlike now. I am a working actress. You act all the time, sister. On the board, in the street, in your bedroom, you never tire of your own voice. Now then, no squabbling. Remember, our audience do listen. Le ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my mother, the renowned and glittering star of the theatre firmament, and my loquacious sister, actor in training. Now children, I take your younger sibling to the Church of St Mary's. There I will continue with my revelries. Tis the church you were baptised, Sarah. I will meet you both at the Bell Inn an hour of the clock from now. We will go through the books and I need your quick arithmetic, Stephen. Yes, Mother. I must admit, your arithmetic is quick and your hawking our business to the crowd is exemplary. Leave the glamour and precision of acting to me. As Pa and Grandpapa say, the business and the making of the money are as important as the glamour and precision of the boards. I will be a manager of a theatre one day, or a company of strolling players. I'm well equipped for it. Got the brains and the experience. It might seem so, brother. Men and boys have the rights, and the women and girls have none. But we must tell how our beloved parents, and indeed all those who work in the company, educate us with both intention and no intention in the ways of the theatre and the making of the money. Sarah Campbell, renowned beauty and actress of the Roger Campbell Company, and Stephen Campbell, heir to our beloved father and a businessman on the make. You start, Sarah. Start here at Shoulder of Mutton Inn. We both know our mother's stories. I, Sarah Campbell, was born here on the 5th July 1755 as dawn broke over Brecon. My exhausted ma rested for the day and suckled me to health and strength. But being a woman of responsibility and energy, she rose the next morning, dressed splendidly and carried me in her arms to the Bell Inn. Despite my arrival, the business of our theatre company went on. Our mother was an integral part of its success, not only as a talented actress, who drew crowds in their hundreds, but as the intelligence which drove the daily and the long-term working of the theatre company. With our pa and grandpapa off the Chandrin Dodwell's races, she had to recast part for the next performance and beyond, pay the local bills and ensure a paying audience for the coming weeks. With me clutched to her bosom, she instructed, led and rehearsed the remaining company. The next performance she performed 
resplendent and dazzling in the tragedy and the comic play. I was asleep in a basket behind the boards. At the end of the performance, I was brought in my basket onto the boards and proudly displayed to the audience. Ma says I got a standing ovation, but I think it was her performance and her ability to produce a child simultaneously. That was my first time on stage. A triumph. An excellent tale, dear sister, but I have a better. My mother is a formidable woman and acted throughout all her pregnancies. She was pregnant with me when she played a lover whose hero had died in battle. As the lights dimmed and the audience applauded, moved to tears and ladies fainting in grief, my ma had to dart to the costume cubby where a spear carrier and the landlord's wife witnessed my birth. I was practically born on the boards. As Pa says, the boards are in our blood. I, we cannot imagine another life. And making the coins of gold, our eyes are always on the prize. The prize, as you know, brother, has always to be earned. From we were small, we were part of the business. Ma taught us to read and write, to count our numbers, to memorise poems, ditties and songs. We understand the price of everything and how to barter to make a profit for the company. But profit cannot be at the expense of our performances. Our business is an art of the highest calibre. We bring quality to our customers, challenging anything they could see in London. True, sister. I am to the printers. Pa asked me to pick up the playbills for next week's shows. We baptised our firstborn Sarah here on the 14th of July, 1755. It was a golden day. My father, my beloved husband Roger and the entire company gathered to celebrate her entry into the world. I wore flowers in my hair, Roger had a nosegay made for me and a tiny one for Sarah. We rested that day, no performances and no work, all in our best clothes, a sumptuous lunch of pies at the shoulder of mutton, surrounded by friends full of good and godly wishes. We toasted Sarah, we toasted me, and we toasted ourselves, the entire company. We had profited at the Landrin Dodd Wells Races Week. Our performances were cheered and appropriation resounded in the broadsheets. Our renown assured future work across many towns in England and Wales. Such a happy day. Our business, our future, and our family were safe and secure and I could pursue my personal joy of creating captivating and memorable characters across the boards. And most importantly, our darling girl was strong and lusty. Today, 12 years later, I've been able to reflect on that happy day and the days since. This babe in my arms is my seventh child, strong and lusty like my Sarah. Of my seven children, only three live. I lost a son at birth, Two girls as they toddled, felled by fevers in their throats. A girl I found silent in her cradle. Motherhood is hard. It is both a blessing and a curse. The joy of childbearing and child rearing is counterbalanced by the dread and terror of your own death as the child falls from your body. The disease that mysteriously blights then takes your precious child and the paralysis of thought and feeling as you grieve for the empty space left in your arms. When I look at my living children, I catch a glimpse of my dead children in the twinkling of an eye, the grip of a chubby fist, in the caress of a curly head, in the call of mama from another room. I have three healthy children, intelligent, talented, and each have wit enough for four men. I am a fortunate woman, I have a husband who loves me, and not only is love, he respects my business head and still admires my struts and poses on the boards. I am 32 years of age. On the boards I pass for a 22-year-old nymph, all due to my skills as an experienced actress, my natural beauty and the flattery of the footlights. I am an actress of renown. I relish the muffled weeping as I expire as the beautiful heroine in one play and delight at the raucous applause of approval as I outwit tawdry boards and cads in a comic caper. Performance puts fire in my belly. It drives me forwards and thwarts the melancholy that can sometimes overwhelm me. Besides, I keep the books and look after the money. And where would we all be without money? 
Homeward now to my chicks, my man, and my glittering world of disguise, footlights and shadows. <laughs>